This is the golden question. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 18 of the Golden Question podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be answering the question, how the Republican Party is worse than the Democrats. Now, I know that may not sound like an actual question. It's more of a statement. Uh, and I figure that it'll be uh, inevitable given that I want to make my titles more of a statement. Uh, now, yeah, I want to make my title more of a statement. Uh, but I want to make it as a question also, and then we can answer that question in the podcast. But sometimes if I just make it as a question, it may be too ambiguous. I want people who look at the title to have an idea of what my answer will be before they actually click and listen. So let's get to answering this question. We have the Democrats and the Republicans, two parties in the U.S. One party supposedly for big government, the Democrats. One party supposedly for, uh, for smaller government. False. Anybody who believes that narrative is um, greatly mistaken, is the easiest way I could put it. Anybody who believes that the Republican is for limited government is... It, it, um, definitely Trump has made it for certain that the Republicans are no longer for that party. I mean, before you could sort of, you know, stay, you could ask, you could ask that question um, and you could maybe argue, yeah, but they're still for. But I think Trump has made it certain that Republicans are no longer for limited government. They're actually for that same big government that the Democrats are advocating for. Now, what's the difference between them? The difference is how they are going to pay for it. Now, the Democrats say that they're going to pay for it through taxes. The Republicans are going to pay for it through debt, through inflation, through money printing, and they're going to postpone the payments for this big government. Now, what policy sounds more conservative to you? For conservatives who are still voting Republican, they're party is not acting as a conservative. What they're advocating for is more debt, more inflation, more money printing, and a postponement of, uh, postponement of the payment. What, is that a conservative value? Is going into debt for something to afford uh, to pay for something and not suffering the consequences of paying for it up front, is that a conservative value? I don't think so. And this is on a government level, right? You could say, all right, paying for a car, if I'm going to go into debt to pay that car, that you could thread the lines and say, you know, maybe that's not, a, maybe that could be a conservative value. It may or may not be. But this is the government. This is somebody telling you, how should government be funded? Should government be funded through taxation or through debt? Obviously, a conservative value that goes in a line with one's micro level economics right somebody who believes you know what i don't want to cons uh, i don't want to consume debt debt is not a, uh, a way to prosperity debt cannot make me wealthy in fact debt makes people poor makes people go into poverty i don't believe in debt i believe in capital investments i believe in savings that is a conservative value but if you apply it to government you ideally you don't want big government so you don't have to uh of uh, pay the bill of that big government. But let's say big government is inevitable, right? We have these two parties that both advocate for big government. Let's say it's inevitable. You, There's no way of, of going around this big government. But now how are you going to pay for it? The conservative way is to pay for it through taxations. That's the honest way of paying for it. You're paying for it up front. You're suffering the consequences of that big government now. And in effect, you can let people decide is this big government worth it? Is this big government worth this huge deduction in your standard of living? And in fact, maybe people might then change their mind and then not advocate for that big government or not support that big government. And they may be persuaded to then uh, be in favor of a limited government. And they, they, might, they may feel that it's not worth it. So you could see the dangerous road that the Republicans are now treading. They don't want to let people suffer the consequences of this big government. What they're essentially telling the voters are, you can have your big government, we can have big government, and everything is going to be fine. 
that is a dangerous path because you're telling people, you know what? This idea that big government is bad, that that that's something in the past. That that no that no longer uh, matters anymore. Big government, we can have big government now, and we don't have to suffer the consequences of big government. That is a dangerous message to send to voters. You're you're no longer this party for limited government. You're still advocating for people to keep their entitlements, keep all these big government programs, and you don't have to suffer the consequences for that. At least the Democrats are honest. They're saying, let's have big government, but it comes at a cost. You're going to have to pay for big taxes. You're going to have to pay for it now. And it's up to you to decide whether or not you think that big government is worth it. Now, as a free market uh, proponent, as a capitalist, you know that big government reduces standard of living, reduces the wealth of a nation, reduces the wealth of individuals, increases poverty, and makes an efficient, inefficient government. So if you pay, if you have that big government and you pay for it through taxation, right away the answer becomes clear that people are no longer going to want that big government and are going to move towards a more limited government uh, stance. But that's not the message that Republicans are spreading. Republicans are instead saying you can have your big government. You don't have to suffer the consequences because there aren't any. There isn't anything wrong because you're not paying for the big government now. We're just going to borrow some money through the Fed, which the Fed is going to print. We're going to pay for it through inflation. Everybody's dollars are going to be worth less, and somebody else in the future, a future generation, will pay for it. Is that a conservative value? Is that something that you know your grandmother would hold right? If you want to buy something, right, and you're and and she says, uh, no, you you must pay for it through your savings, and and your mother, your grandmother probably pays everything, uh, f- through her savings, is is a conservative value. Her saying, you know what, go into debt, um, your kids will probably pay for it. That is not a conservative value at all. So I find that the Republican message is detrimental to the U.S. economy and the U.S. nation as a whole. Because you're getting people used to this big government and you're not letting them suffer the consequences of that big government. You're basically giving an excuse for the big government to expand. Frankly, as a conservative, I want to advocate for people because, first of all, as I said, Republicans are for big government. There's no going around that. You have Republicans and you have Democrats. Both parties are for big government. The only difference is how are they going to pay for this big government? One is going to pay for it honestly through taxation. They're going to pay for it now. They're not going to go into debt. They're going to pay for it now through your taxes, through your income, through your savings. And the other party is saying, no, we're not going to touch that. We're going to go into debt to pay for this big government. We're going to uh, print more money and we're going to create inflation to pay for this big government. Which sounds more conservative. You have to pick. As a conservative, the Democrats are paying for government honestly. They are doing what the capitalists want us to do, right? Or or Adam Smith, what he wants us to do. He's saying that, or Adam Smith says that, uh, if you want big government, you're going to suffer some consequences. Your, your economy is going to become inefficient, right? Through taxation, instead of that wealth being invested, being saved up, and being used in the economy. Instead, it's being squandered in the capital. And you suffer those consequences right away once you have that big government in place. The the Republicans are saying, have that big government, but postpone the problems. We're going to go into debt. First of all, postponing the problems is worse enough because the more you postpone the problems, the the worse those problems are going to become because there's obviously interest when you go into debt. So you're going to end up paying more for this big government than you would have if you paid for it now. But besides that point, how is this government going to get funded? It's not just a bunch of foreign investors loaning us their money and then expecting us to pay them back. It's through the Fed. The Fed is printing money to fund this big government. And what happens when the Fed prints money? Our value, the, our purchasing power, or the value of the dollar that we have decreases. So there, there is a, a negative effect both ways, whether or not you think the Fed uh, monetizes the debt of the government, or if we're the, the, the government is fund- is getting funded through debt uh, that is being uh, monetized by foreign investors. Regardless of which view you hold, 
it's still bad. You're still, anytime you postpone a problem, it's inevitably going to get worse, either through inflation or through the interest that you're going to have to pay through uh, on, on the debt. But I think that the inflation is much worse than just having to pay back the debt with interest. Because the inflation, believe it or not, hurts everybody. Because everybody now uh, is going to feel the effects of inflation. And in fact, it's at a much greater proportion. Inflation hurts people at a much greater proportion than just having to pay back some debt with interest. But both are bad, regardless. So which value is conservative? Again, I'm trying to stress this point out. Which value is conservative? Is it the value that advocates to pay for something now, honestly? Or is it a the policy to pay for something through debt, through inflation, through the postponement of the payment? Which is more conservative? Which is a value, a policy, or a value, or an idea that you hold, that you believe is true? Do you think debt makes individuals more wealthy? If it doesn't, then why do you think... Why do you give an excuse to the government to go into debt and to somehow make us more wealthy or make itself more wealthy? It doesn't work. As a conservative, I'm going to advocate for conservatives out there to vote Democrat because at least the Democrats are honest about how they're going to pay for this big government. They're saying, let's pay for it through taxes. They're suffering. They're, we're going to suffer the consequences of that action today, of those actions today, not tomorrow, not 10 years from now not in the next generation today. And in fact, people could then see right before their eyes what happens once you have this big government. They're going to see how expensive big government is today. And then they can make the decision today of whether or not they should continue those policies or revert back. And there's less of a damage being done, right? If all of a sudden everybody's paying 90% and then people, uh, the economy slows down and then people realize, all right, let's not do this. We could easily flip a switch and then lower taxes, government gets smaller, and then we can go back to um, building the economy from a capitalist free market approach. But the problem is when you postpone the problem, switching back isn't, as, isn't so easy, right? When you consume debt and you consume inflation, now all of a sudden you have to, obviously, inflation, you have to constrain the money supply, which is going to send the economy further below than the point that it already is. Or you have to default on debt. The, the damage that gets done when you postpone the problem and then revert, try to revert back, it's, it's irreversible, essentially. So, again, I'm going to conclude this episode by saying, if you are a conservative, if you believe in the free market as the most efficient way to run an economy, if you believe in limited government, make government as small as possible, you have to vote Democrat because both parties are inevitably going to advocate for big government. Both parties, regardless. Both parties are going to advocate for big government. One is advocating big government through taxation, which is the honest way of, of, of facing the consequences of that big government. You're facing the effects of it now. You're feeling how expensive it is, right? It's coming right out of your paycheck through taxation. And then in that essence, People could then realize, you know what, maybe I don't want this big government. It's not worth it. And they could then advocate, hopefully, for a, a limited government. Or you have the Republican route, which is have big government. Don't worry, we won't suffer the consequences. The Republican Party is an extremely dangerous party, I think, to the, to the nation and, it, and our nation's economy. Because it is drugging it up, right? Whenever you have debt. You're getting people used to something, and you're used. You're getting people used to giving them something for nothing. Big government. You you're telling people you can have this big government without the cost, without taxation. But little do they know that the the cost of big government through inflation, through debt, is tremendous. It is vastly more expensive to pay for something through debt rather than just paying for it up front. I mean, that is the definition of debt right there. That, that is why debt is, doesn't make individuals happy. Uh, doesn't make individuals happy, yes. Doesn't make individuals happy. Uh, what I meant to say is it, it doesn't make individuals more wealthy because you end up losing more because you have to pay the debt back on top of interest. And in this case, if you, if, uh, in, the nation's, in, the, in the nation perspective and in, in a more national perspective, excuse me, uh, the federal government is now printing money 
through the Federal Reserve. So you have you can throw an in inflation in there, right? Forget about the interest. Inflation now is, is going to become a problem. So that's going to conclude this episode. Hopefully I, I stressed my point that if you're a conservative, if we're all capitalists, right? If you're a capitalist, if you're a person who believes in the free market, vote Democrat because it's both parties are big government. And if if you're a free market, you believe in paying for stuff now. You believe in savings. You do not believe in debt. And so that's what the Democrats are advoc advocating for. The Democrats are not advocating for um, going into debt, let the Federal Reserve print money. They want to increase your taxes. They want to pay for the big government that they're advocating for now. Now, once that does get passed, people are going to realize, as I said a million times, they're going to realize that big government is, is too expensive and they can revert back. But that they can only revert back if they follow that path. If they follow the Republican path, there is no reverting back. It's irreversible damage done to the economy, done to the nation, and, and done effectively to the minds of millions of people. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and as always, stay safe.